These are the Adidas Dame 9. This is the first signature shoe from Adidas and Dame in quite some time. It's been about almost three seasons since we got a signature shoe, like a brand new signature shoe from Adidas and Dame. Uh, the last one we got was the Adidas Dame 8, obviously, and then we had last season the Adidas Extended Play. Um, and so the Dame Extended Play was just a slight modification of the original silhouette. The Dame 8 had a midfoot strap, but virtually all the technology was the same, and then the silhouette itself was virtually the same as before. This is the Dame 9, and this is a brand new signature shoe for the Damian Lillard line. Um, and it features two colorways as the launch colorways, and they are exclusive uh, collaborations with BAPE in their signature green camo and signature red camo, along with an entire apparel line. But the real question is, how do these perform on the court now that this is the first shoe in almost three years from Adidas and Damian Lillard? How do these actually perform? We're gonna find that out. But before we get into the video, if you can like, subscribe, and comment, any engagement really helps the video to get exposure and grow and helps the channel grow overall. And I will be eternally grateful for everything that you all do. But without further ado, let's get into this review. Starting off with the packaging, as we always do, um, this is unmistakably a BAPE collaboration, obviously. You have the BAPE print all over the box and it's unmistakable, like I said. You have the Damian Lillard logo on the top of the box and then you have co-branded Adidas and BAPE all over the sides and the front of the box. So again, this is unmistakably a BAPE collaboration. Uh, when you open the box, you're greeted with a uh, special tissue paper. So it's just not run of the mill tissue paper, but it is a BAPE print tissue paper on the inside as well. And obviously you have your shoes when you bring them out. Um, but overall, I wouldn't consider this packaging for what they are and how much the shoe costs over the regular retail price. I wouldn't consider this premium packaging, but it is um, specific to this particular shoe. Now, over on the design side, details absolutely matter. Um, and there are a lot of details on this shoe. First and foremost, and probably most obvious, is the fact that this shoe is covered in the BAPE camo. Um, and in this particular colorway, the green camo colorway, you obviously have the red camo colorway as well. Um, it literally just covers the entire shoe. On the toe box of the shoe or the vamp of the shoe, you have the Adidas logo debossed with a gold foil in there. You have the bathing ache logo on the heel counter debossed again with that gold foil. And then you have the Bapes de logo debossed all over a, a 3M reflective heel tab. Now, in terms of other details, you have the laces that are actually Bapesta or Bape colorway as well. So they have the Bape camo print all over, but they also come with an extra pair of laces or if those are too loud or since they are flat laces, if they're a little bit too wide. The other ones I believe are oval laces or just smaller laces in general, so they should be easier to tie and use. The sock liner or the insole of the shoe features that uh, Bape camo colorway as well all over. But on either of the shoe, you have one shoe in the Adidas logo, you have the other shoe in the Bape logo. One last little thing is you have a little bit of a tab that you would find on like a t-shirt. You actually have it on each shoe with the Bape logo in there. And that's just to denote that this is a uh, co-branded product with Bape and Adidas. A couple details to finish this off, you have premium leather hits on the toe box and obviously on the heel counter as well. And this is just to dress up the Dame 9 a little bit more, um, make it a little bit more premium. And for that, you obviously are paying a $40 premium over the retail price of the Dame 9. So you're going from $120 US to $160. On the outsole of the shoe, you actually have um, some numbers and letters in the treads of the shoe. And these actually are kind of a call out to his children. Uh, so on one side, he has his son's initials and his date of birth. And then on the, other, on the other side, he has his twin daughter's initials and then their date of birth as well. So I think that's a really cool feature or a really cool storytelling element that doesn't mess with the actual performance of the shoe overall. Um, it is just a, again, a call out to his children. Now, from a materials perspective, there isn't necessarily anything premium about the Dame 9. Uh, the Dame 9 in the Bape colorway features uh, leather hits, again, like I said, on the toe box and the heel counter. But Overall, the upper kind of seems to be made of like a vinyl material. It doesn't seem to be, again, anything premium. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think as the shoe was made up is obviously intended for performance, containment, and things like that. And there's a lot of those features built into the shoe. So the fact that it doesn't feature premium materials all over the place isn't necessarily a deal breaker. Again, for the Bape colorway, it is kind of upgrading the experience with those genuine hits of leather on the toe box and the heel down. Now, we obviously can't talk about the materials without talking about the weight. The Dame 9 in the Bape collaboration comes in weighing 17.2 ounces or 488 grams in a size 12. Um, it kind of puts it in line with a lot of the other shoes I've tested this year. So 
it isn't any lighter or any heavier and you don't really feel that weight on the court which is obviously a great thing so they obviously did a great job of weight distribution throughout the shoe uh, there's no particular part of the shoe that feels any heavier than the other um, one shoe that kind of stands out in terms of weight was the adidas anthony edwards one uh, where a lot of the weight was centered on that outsole and probably the cushioning itself so it was a, a very bottom heavy shoe and the name nine is a well distributed shoe and should bode well for performance overall now over on the fit and containment side this is a little, a little bit of a tricky situation i've played in the dame signature line uh, a couple times in the past i played in the dame three and the dame four and both i got in size 12 and a half which is a half size up from my normal size but with those particular shoes they fit a little bit long and so i could have gone through the size in either shoe um, and they were one piece upper so they fit a little bit weird in general with the Dame 9, I decided to go true to size just because I figured um, from a sizing perspective, there should be some consistency, specifically for the athlete, there should be some consistency in the line itself. I went with my true size 12 and they fit snug to begin with. I wore them casually to try and loosen them up and break them in a little bit. And I wore them for a good eight, nine hours and they just didn't have any give. When I played in them, uh, my foot Fortunately, it was pretty secure on the footbed, but it was destroying my feet. It was very tight around the balls of my feet. Um, and eventually, um, I ended up developing a blister, and that blister actually ended up getting ripped off during my playing time. Now, a little bit of a viewer discretion, and do not judge me on my feet, but I'm going to throw up a picture as B-roll just to show the, kind of like the after effects of how tight the shoe is, specifically on the toe box area. It was quite painful, but I played through it just so that I can finish my testing. I didn't want to cut short the testing just for the pain. Um, but I will say that that is something to keep in mind if you're looking to get the shoe. If you're a wide footer, I would advise going a half size or a whole size up because of that issue, especially on that toe box. If you're a narrow to normal sized foot, you're probably going to be okay going true to size because that foot or that fit is a kind of like a one-to-one -one, uh, type of fit. So if you like that snug one-to-one -one fit, go true to size if you're narrow to normal size foot. If you're a wide footer, go half a size up or even a whole size. Now again, we talked about the fit, but on the containment side, uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the containment was fantastic on the shoe. Again, with the way it fits, it keeps your foot on the footbed. Uh, it obviously has those outriggers and kind of like those protections, those lateral kind of pieces to keep your foot stabilized. Um, along with the cushioning, which we'll get into in just a moment, your foot is pretty stable on the footbed. It's sitting in there. Uh, so you're not gonna have any real issues of rolling your ankles or anything like that. It is a low cut shoe, but it is a well-built low cut shoe um, intended for stability and giving you the ability to make those cuts. Now with the cushioning on the Dame 9, it's a little bit of a tricky situation. So I've played in Dames, like I said earlier, before the three and the four, and they featured Bounce. Um, so the Dame line has featured Bounce or Bounce Pro. And that is a nice bouncy type of foam. The Dame 9 features Light Strike all throughout. I don't really have a whole lot of experience with Light Strike. I do have the experience of the Hardened Volume 8 that had Light Strike as a carrier, I believe, along with Jet Boost along the middle. But that main uh, cushioning setup was uh, Jet Boost. On the Dame 9, we have Light Strike and in this implementation, it is a very firm foam. And even after wearing the shoe casually, to try and break that foam in to get some bounce at least. I never got that bounce. I never got any give on that foam. So if you're looking for a firm loaded ground ride with a lot of court feel, the Dame 9 is gonna be probably one of your favorite shoes to play in. It is a very firm ride. That's not my cup of tea, but it is something that a lot of people prefer. And if that's something that you're looking for, the Dame 9 is going to be your shoe. Now, when it comes to the traction for the Dame 9, traction was absolutely fantastic. It features like a zigzag pattern on the outsole. It's not necessarily herringbone. It's just a zigzag pattern. You can call it a modified herringbone if you want to, but on the court, on a moderately clean court, I never had any issues with slipping, never had any, any issues with like having to wipe the outsole or anything like that. It was just a fantastic performing shoe. The, the traction just held up. It was tacky the entire time I played in it. And that's with me wearing them casually outside and things like that. They got dirty, they got dust on them. And again, it just was no issue in terms of the traction. Um, and then when it comes to the durability of the outsole, it's a pretty hard rubber. I think it will hold up if you decide to play outdoors. Um, I don't think you're gonna have any, any issues with durability. You're not gonna have to worry about the outsole running or wearing out quickly or anything like that. So if you wanted to play these on an outdoor or indoor court, I think you'd be safe to do that. Now, when it comes to my recommendation for the Adidas Dame 9, 
this is an easy shooter to recommend just from the perspective of value. So this is coming in at $120 US. This is a great performing shoe overall. Um, it has that low profile cushioning setup with a lot of port feel. That's something you prefer. You're gonna love these. In terms of fit and containment, it's really gonna keep your foot in the, on the footbed. If you're a narrow to normal size foot, you're gonna wanna go true to size and your foot will be secure in this shoe without a doubt. If you're a, a wide footer like myself, you're gonna want to go a half size or even a whole size up just to avoid the chafing that I had on the knuckles of my toes, which was extremely painful. Um, so again, half size or whole size up for wide footers, true to size for everybody else. But in general, easy shoe to recommend, $120, excellent value for the Dame 9, and overall a great performing shoe. Um, I do plan on getting more pairs and getting them in my proper size just to see how they perform when they actually don't hurt me. But overall, this is going to end it for this video. If there's anything you want to know or if there's anything I missed for the Adidas Dame 9, please leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day.